Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I am Khairul Alam, Assistant Professor, English, Dhaka College, Dhaka. Again, welcome you to my online class or virtual class. We know that now you are coming physically in the college thrice a week, but we think it is not well enough to complete your courses. That is why Dhaka College is continuing with their online classes and for this region we are taking your class so that you can be benefited by our online classes. In my previous classes I discussed on phrases and words. I have already taken two classes on phrases and words. Today I will continue with this topic but along with the rules of phrases and words I will also focus on right form of verbs for your better understanding because uh, I think right form of verbs is the main item of your grammar. Uh, it has a close connection with all kinds of rules of grammars that is why today i will focus on some rules of right form of verbs i know or you know the right form of verbs have been all uh, has been already solved by uh, our teachers but i will continue again on some different rules okay uh, first of all i will continue on the uh, previous topic phrases and words in my previous classes i have focused on five or six rules today i will again discuss on some topic of phrases and words first of all i will discuss on the fridge let alone let alone let alone if we want to know the bengali meaning of let alone we see we can write bad dev abar bhabai jayna Chinta korai jayna. That means uh, in Bengali it reveals the uh, meaning bad dev abar bhabai jayna chinta korai jayna. Generally it reveals the negative sense. Generally, shadharanato, generally let alone. Generally, the page let alone reveals that means Prokash Kore reveals the negative sense by negative meaning. So, we see the phrase let alone uh, reveals the Bengali meaning bad dev abar bhabai jayana chinta korai jayana and uh, generally it reveals negative sense or negative meaning. Now, I will show the rules of let alone with some examples along with a structure. First of all, I will give you the structure of let alone. Generally, we can write with this structure subject plus negative form 
of verb subject plus negative form of verb plus object plus let alone plus noun oblique verb oblique noun phrase so by following the above mentioned structure we can write the sentence using let alone or we can uh, complete the blank by using let alone in this way subject plus negative form of verb object plus let alone plus noun or verb or noun phrases okay dear students let's see through the examples in sentences of let alone i will give you some examples of the word or phrase let alone for example he cannot drive a motorbike let alone a car we see he cannot drive a motorbike she motorbike ki chalate pare na let alone a car abar gari or she motorbike ki chalate pare na garir kotha bad dao she motorbike ki chalate pare na garir kotha to chintai kora jay na ba garir kotha to bhabai jay na in this way uh, the let alone uh, reveals the meaning negatively sadharanoto it uh, reveals the negative meaning in the sentence okay it is very easy but structurally i have shown you uh, that will help you to write any kind of sentences using let alone subject negative form of verb object plus let alone noun verb noun phrase he cannot drive a motorbike let alone a car he cannot uh, read bengali let alone english ke banglai porte pare na abar ingreji ba arabic okay such type of meaning is revealed or expressed by the phrase let alone next i will discuss another page known as what if what if the use of what if uh, we know generally it expresses what would happen what would happen that means ki ghotbe jodi emon hoy ki ghotbe jodi emon hoy kemon hobe jodi emon hobe jodi ki ghotbe jodi in this regard we use hot if to express the bengali meaning ki ghotbe jodi kemon hobe jodi uh, that means hot if expresses the meaning of the phrase another hot would happen hot would happen if ki uh, ghotbe jodi ki ghotbe jodi in bengali we can say ki ghotbe jodi kemon hobe jodi kemon hobe jodi so you see the phrase hot if expresses the meaning in bengali 
কি ঘটবে যদি কেমন হবে যদি অর্থাৎ ইফ এনিথিং হ্যাপেন দেন হোয়াট উইল হ্যাপেন টু মি অর ইউ অর এনি আদার সাবজেক্ট অর্থাৎ কোন ব্যক্তি যদি কোনো কিছু মিস করে ফেলে ফেল করে ফেলে অর ইফ ইউ অর আই অর হি ক্যান ফল ইন ডেঞ্জার দেন হোয়াট উইল হ্যাপেন যদি আমরা কখনো বিপদে পড়ি দেন হোয়াট উইল হ্যাপেন টু আচ অর হোয়াট উইল হ্যাপেন টু দ্য সাবজেক্ট ইন দিস রিগার্ড বা ইন দিস সেন্স উই ইউজ জেনারেলি হোয়াট ইফ বাট উই শুড রিমেম্বার ইন মাইন্ড দ্য সিম্পল স্ট্রাকচার অব দ্য ফ্রিজ হোয়াট ইফ অ্যান্ড দ্যাট মিন্স আমরা উই ক্যান রাইট ইট স্ট্রাকচারালি হোয়াট ইফ প্লাজ affirmative sentence that means after what if we should use only affirmative sentence not negative sentence what if we will follow the affirmative sentence for example what if we miss the train we should use sign up interrogation or interrogative mark after the ending of the uh, sentence hot if plus affirmative sentence plus prashnabodok chinno so hot if we miss the train ki ghotbe jodi amra train fail kori ba train miss kori again we can write hot if Mr. Rohim is fired from his job. Here the word fire or passive fire expresses the meaning suspension from the job. Borkhasto kora. What if ki ghatbe jodhi Rohim ke chakki theke borkhasto kora hai? Dear students, we see what if expresses the Bengali meaning ki ghatbe jodi kemon hobe jodi. Then that means uh, what will happen next if anything dangerous happen to us, anything uh, harming happen to us. Or that if negative happening happens in our life, then what will be? our next process ba how can we face the problem kibhabe amra ei samasya tar mokabela korbo ba ki hobe so ki ghotbe or kemon hobe jodi the phrase what if uh, refers or reveals such type of bengali meaning to express our suspicion or any kind of hesitation for next happening what happen if we fail in the exam if we fail in the exam what happen if she fails in the exam jodi she parikha fail kore tar ki ghotbe in this regard we can use what if uh, generally it is used at the beginning of the sentence but it can be used at uh, anywhere in the sentence but it will follow a affirmative an affirmative sentence in the affirmative sentence okay the next one we will discuss as though as if the phrase as though or as if expresses similar meaning as though or as if in bengali the meaning of as though or as if jeno mone hoy jeno or only jeno that means in bengali we can say it expresses the meaning jeno or mone hoy jeno for example we can write a sentence 
he talks as if he were a man. He talks she kotha bole as if money hoy jeno he were a man she ekta pagol. So here we can use as if or as though. There is no difference between as if and as though because it expresses similar meaning jeno or money hoy jeno. Then he talks as if or as though he were a mat. Now uh, we should follow the two different structures if we want to write correct sentence using as though or as if. So now we will see according to the rules of right form of verbs, we should follow the grammatical rules when we will use as though or as if in the sentences or to fill in the blanks. So Jodi Amra Kokono as though ba as if bebohar kore shunnastan puron korte chai or if we want to write a meaningful sentences by using as though and as if, then we will have to follow the following structures. Now I will show you the structures that we will follow when we will use as though or as if to fill in the blanks or to write freehandedly. As though as if. If we write a sentence before as if or as though in present indefinite tense, then we should write the second sentence, that means the sentence after as if or as though will be past indefinite. So the structure is present indefinite sentence or clause plus as though or as if then after as if or as though we have to use past indefinite. But if we use be verb in the second sentence, then we have to write only where, not watch. The past tense of be verb is was and where. We can write both was and where as the past tense of be verb singular was and in plural where but when we will use as if or as though in the sentence we cannot use was only we have to use where as the past form of be verb but if the verb is transitive or finite or principal verb then we will use only the past form so we should remember the following structure the above mentioned structure that means uh, first of all we should write present indefinite clause plus as if or as though again we will write past indefinite tense. So in uh, right form of verbs the bracket can be given uh, in the first sentence or in the second sentence but we should remember if the second sentence is past tense, then the first sentence will be present tense. Again, if the first sentence will, uh, first sentence is present indefinite, then we should write the second sentence in past indefinite. For example, I will give you 
a right form of verbs. He tells the story. As if he he tells the story. Here we see the verb tells is present indefinite. He tells the story as if he be a I witness that means she am on the call but a ball a general money has a protocol or she shop get you the kitchen in this regard and the bar B here we see the subject before the B verb is he generally uh, as a past tense we should use he watch but as we have used as if जेहतु अमरा बाकीर मोड़ दे ऐजी बेबहार करें ची, शेइ करुने बीर क्षेत्रे अमरा वाज लिखते पार बना, we should write only where, so the answer will be he were a eyewitness, he tells the story as if he were a eyewitness. Again, the bracket can be in the first sentence like. this sentence he were a i witness that means protokhodorshi now we can give the bracket in the first part sorry before as if or as though he tell the story as if he were eyewitness. Now we should follow the second sentence as it has been written fully. There is no bracket in the second sentence. Our bracket is in the first sentence. So uh, we will follow the same structure. If the second sentence is past tense, then we will use present indefinite in the first sentence. Here we have to use tells he tells the story as if he were a eyewitness in this regard we can write the sentence correctly by using as though or as if again there is another structure of as though and as if past indefinite clause plus as though or as if plus past perfect clause or past perfect sentence that means we should remember the second rule if the first sentence before as though and as if is past indefinite clause or past indefinite tense then we will make the second sentence past perfect or if the second sentence is past perfect we have to make the first sentence past indefinite that is the relation uh, between second and first sentence so we should follow this rule also He talked, we will use the first sentence, he talked as if he here we see before as if I have used he talked. That means the first clause 
is past indefinite. So, according to the rule of right form of verbs, if the first sentence is past indefinite, then we have to make the second sentence past perfect. Past perfect. So, what will be the answer? Please write and show me the comments. What will be the answer? He talked as if he to be a mad. He talked as if he to be a mad. Please write the answer of this sentence. He talked as if he to be a mad. Here we see the first sentence is past indefinite. Then the second sentence will be past perfect. Okay. Thank you. Had been. Here. Uh, the structure of past indefinite subject plus head plus first participle of verb. So, he had the past participle form of be verb is been. He had been a mat. Okay. Uh, if we use as though or as if, to fill in the blanks or to write the sentence correctly, then we should follow these two grammatical structures, present indefinite plus as though as if plus past indefinite. Again, past indefinite plus as though as if plus past perfect. Now, I will give you some exercises on right form of verbs and I will Solve it with the rules of right form of verbs. In my next class, I will focus on the verb, especially there are different kinds of verb. I think you know all, but I will uh, show you systematically. It, it, it will be very helpful to you, I think, in my next classes. But today, I will give you some uh, right form of verbs. And then we will discuss the rules accordingly. Number one. Please, you will write the answer in full sentence. I have my breakfast. Before you came. The fourth one, I reach the station before the train leaves. I just have a snack, what you generally do for a living. I have my breakfast before you came. Number four, I reach the station before the train leaves. 
please give me the answer in full sentence. Please give me the answer in full sentence. The first one I have just had a snack. Snack means light uh, refreshment or light eatings. Halka khabar. Please write the answer in full sentence. Just like Shiv Shankar Shaha. Just like Shiv Shankar Shaha. I have just had a snack. Please give me the answer of rest three sentences. Number two, number three, number four. What will be the answer of number two, number three and number four? have just had yes correct number two number th three and number four what will be the answer of number four okay now i am giving the answer uh, some of you uh, have given the correct answers, but the answer of question number four or the number four is, is still wrong. Nobody of you okay. Now I am. Uh, telling the uh, answer according to the rules of right form of verbs. In the first sentence, we see I just have a snack. According to the rules, if we use just, just now, already, yet, lately, recently in the uh, sentences, then we have to make page in perfect. We have to make page in perfect. Uh, of the bar. So, uh, if we use just, we have to make the use, uh, we have to make the sentence present perfect. The structure of present perfect subject plus have has plus V theory or the past participle form of the bar. So, in the first sentence, you have already uh, given the answers. I have seen the subject is I, so we will use have, I have just the first participle form of have is have, I have just had a snack, I have just had a snack, it is very easy. I have just had a snack. You have given the right answer. I have seen. Okay. Now I will see the second one. It is also very easy. But we should remember the one thing. If we want to write a sentence as interrogative or negative, that means. Uh, Prostobodok or Nabodok Kono Baikko. If we want to write it, we should use auxiliary verb before the subject. That means without auxiliary verb, there is no interrogative or negative sentence. Here we see I go. If we want to make the sentence interrogative, I go, then we will write do I go. In the same way, if I write I do, here we see there is no auxiliary verb. So, we have used do before the subject according to the rules of right form of verbs. If we want to make interrogative of the present tense or present indefinite tense, we have to use do or does. 
if the subject is third person singular number then we will use does before the subject but if the subject subject is second person or third person or second person uh, third person plural then we will use do here we have to use do i do that means do is main verb we have to use another do to make it interrogative so the second sentence the answer of the second sentence will be what you generally do for a living sadharanato jibikar jonno tumi ki koro what do you sorry what do you generally do for a living what do you generally do for a living okay number next number 3 now we will see I have my breakfast before you came. We know a rule according to the right form of verbs. I have my breakfast before you came. If the first sentence, uh, sorry, if the second sentence after before, or that before a body, jodi past indefinite tense hoy then we have to make the first sentence past perfect so the structure of past perfect subject plus head plus v3 we can write the rules in such way before and after past indefinite past perfect sorry sorry past perfect past indefinite again in regards after past indefinite at first and second one will be past perfect so according to these rules we have to use before and after uh, by using the rules In before using the before we should write past perfect and next we will use past indefinite in this rules the answer will be third one i subject had auxiliary verb again we have to use another had for the past participle of have i had had my breakfast not one had but we have to use two had i had had my breakfast before you came i had had my breakfast before you came but in the last sentence we follow i have written i reach the station before the train leaves now we should follow the second sentence i have written the train leaves it is a present indefinite tense so now the rules you can write it in your khata that if we use present indefinite tense after before that means before it pour it if we use second sentence as present indefinite then we will have to make the first sentence future perfect this is the rules you will have to make the first sentence future perfect 
now we will see the structure of future perfect future perfect subject plus shall have or will have shall have or will have plus v3 that means verb at past participle well, if we want to make the future perfect we should the use the following structure subject plus shall have will have plus v3 so uh, if the second sentence is present indefinite after before before it pore the present indefinite the first sentence will be future perfect no, what you generally doing it is not a sentence there is no structure in this sentence what are you generally doing can be written but what do you generally do uh, we know the rules if you generally normally occasionally sometimes often daily weekly then the sentence we will use as present indefinite we should write the sentence in present indefinite tense then what do you generally do for a living or if we want to write the sentence in present continuous we can write what are you generally doing for a living in this way but in the last sentence we have to use future perfect at first then future uh, indefinite or present indefinite at last so the answer will be the last sentence i shall have I shall have a wrist the station I shall have reached the station before the train leaves in Bengali meaning Ami station e pochiya thakibo train sarar purbe before the train leaves l e a v e s so we have to use future perfect in the first sentence we shall have reach sorry i shall have reached the station ami station e pochiya thakibo before the train leaves train sarar purbe okay dear students uh, in my next class i will continue with right form of verbs and as well as with the phrases and words. Uh, thank you all. Allah Hafiz. Uh, today is no more.